Time now for another vlog. And if you have a vlog suggestion that I have yet to do, check the playlist first. Feel free and send your vlogs my way via the comment section, Twitter, Facebook, Discord. All the links to the Go Burns Nation below in the description section. And if there's a vlog suggestion that's very personal to you that you'd like to keep anonymous, I can do that as well. Simply DM me via Twitter, Facebook, or Discord and let me know you'd like to keep that topic suggestion anonymous and I'll be happy to do so. Today marks the two-year anniversary of my vlog series. Not the uh, other channel. Originally it was all about Rockstar editor vids, but eventually I, just, I got tired of that and I wanted to do something else with the channel and vlogs were born. And it just so happens that two years ago today was the very first vlog and it was revolved around fathers. Specifically, my dad and my papal. Unfortunately, a few months after I made that video, my father passed away. But I still have my papal, so that's definitely a good thing. And I have life memories and experiences and the knowledge that I gained from my dad to pass on. And I was trying to come up with an idea for today's vlog. And I didn't want to do something uh, exactly the same as I did two years ago. But I wanted to do something fatherly themed. And at the end of uh, my live stream on Saturday, because it was the day before Father's Day, I mentioned that you know, in the States, it was Father's Day on Sunday. And if you happen to have a father or a grandfather or a fatherly figure that you look up to, that you love and thank the world of, be sure and let them know. Thank them. Tell them you love them. Give them a, a hug, a, a high five, a fist bump, a card. And then I mentioned how, as of right now, I currently don't have any kids except for my two cats and my dog. At least that I know of when it comes to kids. It's just... One of those random jokes I throw out there. I know I don't have any kids. Believe me, if I had a kid, I'm sure somebody would let me know about that. But as, of, as far as I know, I don't have any kids. But chat, being chat, decided to uh, take the opportunity to, to have a, a good spot of humor. And so, uh, yeah, they started calling me daddy. <laughs> oh, my subscribers. So, yeah, daddy, daddy burns. Uh, my favorite... Uh, go daddy. <laughs> but that actually gave me the idea for this vlog. If hypothetically, I had a kid, or kids, I would want to be able to pass on to some, some fatherly advice to them. So let's just say you, yes you, are, are looking for that fatherly advice. And maybe you don't see me as your father or your daddy. Kind of weird, but anyways. But at the very least, you, you would like somebody to give you some fatherly advice. Because, like I mentioned... Uh, I've had technically two fathers in my life, my papal and my dad. And uh, I have my own life experiences that I've learned along the way. And I am old enough to theoretically, hypothetically, have kids. I have friends my age that have kids. They're fathers. So it's not out of the realm of reason or possibility that I could be a father one day. Maybe not a very good father. I mean, I'd like to believe I would be. But anyways, that's beside the point. Here is... I guess you would say 10, around 10 thoughts I came up with, uh, advice that I would pass on to someone, a, a, you know, a child of my own if I had one. So take it or leave it. Fatherly advice for me, daddy go or go daddy, <laughs> whatever. Okay, so the first thing I would like to bestow upon everyone is to learn patience. I've noticed this a lot whenever I'm streaming and trying to play with subscribers that some, not going to name names, can be very, very impatient. And it's not just that. It's something I've noticed in society in general. We live in a fast food society. What I mean by that is that we can order food from a fast food restaurant and within a few minutes we can get a hot meal, whether it's a burger or something else entirely. Maybe not five stars, right? Maybe not the best quality meal you could get. But the premise is we live in this society where we can get something now, now, now. And it used to be you actually had to wait and you actually had to be patient in order to uh, get a meal. Like mom or dad, you know, it took them a while to, uh, you know, go and, you know, prepare the food, uh, cut up the vegetables and whatever else went into the meal. 
It took time. And so you had to have patience. And that's something I feel like that society is lacking as of late. And I, I was fortunate enough to grow up with patience. And now my patience isn't exactly uh, the size of an ocean. Eventually, I too can run out of patience. But for the most part, I'm a, I'm a very patient person. And so that's one thing I would say is learn patience. It's a virtue. And realize that not everything is going to happen overnight. Like goals you're trying to accomplish are not going to be completed the next day or the next week. Sometimes it, it, it just takes time. Uh, case in point, my attempts to lose weight and get healthy. You know, ups and downs. I lose weight. I gain a few pounds back. And in order for me to accomplish that goal, I've had to be patient. I've had to continue working out. Um, start doing more cardio. You have to eat the right food. You have to cut back on all the, the snacks and the, the garbage, if you will. But it does take patience in order to lose weight, in order to uh, get, I guess, the proper skills in life whenever it comes to whatever career you're going to go into. A lot of you have to go into higher learning, whether it's a, a college or a trade school. That takes patience. You have to be patient. You have to take it one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time, and just stay, stay true and be determined and realize that all this patience will pay off eventually. You will succeed. You will accomplish your goals if you stick with them. It just takes time. And another point is my other channel. You know, my current channel currently has, I think we've reached 7,200 subscribers. And I hope to eventually continue to grow that channel. I'm very grateful for the subscribers, viewers, and fans that I have. But any content creator would say that they would very much like to continue growing their channel and become much larger. The same is true for me. But it has to be patience. And that's something I've been working on for the past four years. Trying to keep myself focused and, and patient and continue to try to put out the best content I can, reaching as many people as possible in the hopes that they'll, they'll join the Go Burns Nation. And if it's meant to be, eventually more people will find me and the channel will explode. And if it happens, a lot of that is because of patience, because I stayed the course uh, throughout the ups and downs. And if that happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. The other thing I would like to talk about is another issue in society, manners. Now, I was raised on manners to say please and thank you and yes, sir, yes, ma'am, no, sir, no, ma'am, to, to those that I would, I guess, say are elders. Not, not trying to be insulting to, to older people out there, but respect your elders. Respect your elders. Respect your parents. Respect family members. Respect your teachers. Those in that position that deserve respect. Give it to them. Be nice. Be kind. Have some manners. Because a lot of people don't have manners. A lot of people are, are, are jerks. And I've noticed that from kids. You know, they, they don't say please. They don't say thank you. They don't say yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. And there's even those out there that, that find it insulting if you, if you say yes, sir to them, or, or yes, ma'am. And you're just being nice. You're just trying to be civil or, or hold a door open. Now, a lot of times whenever I hold a door open for somebody... Mostly women, because that's the way I was raised. You know, most of them are, are very thoughtful about it. They say thank you or thanks. And sometimes, you know, you get that look like, hey, you don't have to hold the door open for me. I was just being nice. I was just being considerate. I don't see you as any lesser. I don't, I don't think you're incapable of opening the door yourself. I know you can open the damn door. At least I'd like to believe you can. I'm just showing off some manners here. And I, I think that's another thing that we're missing today is... People not being respectful of each other, not showing manners and kindness and generosity. So, yeah, I, I would like to see more people do that. I would like to see more people say please and, and thank you. And to those in a, I guess, a more respectful position, whether it's your parents or your grandparents, especially the elderly, whenever you're talking to them, say yes or no, sir. Or whenever you're before a judge, say your honor. Or whenever you're before a police officer, be respectful to cops. Because a lot of times people get in trouble with police and they unintentionally exacerbate the situation. I've noticed that because they have an attitude. 
if, if you simply are try to be nice to the cop, even if the cop's being an asshole, and there are definitely racist cops out there. Don't get me wrong, there are. But I've noticed in my own personal experience by simply being respectful to the police officer, being calm and, and saying, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, uh, thank you, that it does kind of make things a little less tense. But, yeah, manners in general are, are good, I think, whether it's towards teachers or your parents or some other important uh, figure in your life. So manners, definitely something I would like to bestow on any of you looking for fatherly advice. Next is to be grateful. Now, I realize that all of us have been given a bad hand in our lives. For example, as I've mentioned before, I lost my mom at a very early age. And my dad passed away nearly two years ago. And, you know, some other stuff has happened in my life as well. Good things and bad things. However, overall, I have to say that I've had a pretty good life. I've been very fortunate compared to a lot of other people in the world. And it's so easy to focus on the negative, to be such a Debbie Downer about, oh, woe is me. Why don't I have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband or a wife? Or why don't I have more subscribers? Or why don't I have any of this, whatever it is you're seeking that's bringing you down because you don't have it right now? That goes back to patience, by the way. A lot of us are too focused on that instead of being grateful for what we do have. And that's one reason why I'm always grateful for the fact that I actually do have subscribers and viewers and fans. Over on this channel, I have over 200 now on my vlogs channel. Over on the gaming channel, I have uh, 7,200 uh, subscribers, viewers, and fans. And I'm very grateful for that. So instead of focusing on not having, uh, say, 700,000 subscribers, I'm grateful for having 7,000 subscribers. Because I could have less than that. I could have 700 or I could have 7 subscribers. So always be grateful of the things that you are lucky to have in this life. Because there's always somebody out there way less fortunate than you that doesn't have the things that you have. Whether it's a roof over your head or, or a meal or any of these other things that you sometimes can take for granted. And that goes for all of us. We should all be grateful that we're, we're here, that we are alive on this beautiful world that we should take better care of. So definitely that's another thing I would say. Be grateful. Be grateful for yourself. Be grateful for your family. Be grateful for your friends. Be grateful for those that are in your life that mean the world to you. Next is learn from your mistakes and be responsible. We all make mistakes. I've made plenty of mistakes in my life. My dad made mistakes. My papa made mistakes. Even though I, I looked up to both, even though this is what today's vlog is themed around, fathers, grandfathers, even the best of fathers make mistakes. Nobody's perfect. You make mistakes. But we can learn from our mistakes. And learning from our mistakes makes us wiser. That's where wisdom comes from, life experiences and, and anytime we screw up. Whenever you make a mistake and you re recognize you made a mistake, you overreacted in this situation or, or you zigged when you should have zagged, learn from that and realize, you know what, I made a mistake there. I made a bad call. And take responsibility for that. Realize that, you know, sometimes there are things that happen that are beyond our control that we're not really at fault for. But that is not always the case. A lot of times it's our own doing. It's because of choices we made in our lives that, that caused us to end up making that bad choice, that bad decision, that mistake. So, yeah, we make mistakes. None of us are perfect. But we can learn from our mistakes and at the same time, learning responsibility from those respect from those mistakes, because responsibility is something very important. I think you should be responsible for yourself, responsible for your life, responsible for the choices you make, good and bad. So definitely learn to from your mistakes and, of course, responsibility. I feel like those two go hand in hand. Let's see. Next is seek knowledge. And this ties into, you know, learning from your mistakes. We learn from our mistakes, it gives us greater knowledge down the road. You have to fail before you can succeed. Actually, I'm getting ahead of myself on that one. But anyways, back to seeking knowledge. So we learn from our mistakes. But if there's anything in the world out there that interests you, that entices you, because humans are very, very curious creatures. And sometimes maybe a little too curious, like cats, right? Too curious for our own good. But there's nothing wrong with seeking knowledge. Whenever you have 
like something in your head that's like, you know what? I wonder how that works. I wonder why the sun comes up. I wonder about weather. I wonder about how like computers are made or how like vehicles run. Like what, what makes a vehicle function? All the parts, the design, anything that entices you like history. Like, I wonder why we're in the situation we're in, in the world. Why, why does this group dislike that group? Like, where do we come from historically? Like nations and and various civilizations of the past and things that just interest you, whatever it happens to be, whether it's a science or, or literature, our philosophies, history, doesn't matter. Whether it's a, becoming a mechanic or becoming a scientist, becoming a doctor, becoming a nurse, becoming a teacher, whatever interests you, whatever is there in this world that just fascinates you, that you want to learn more about, Maybe you want to be a musician. Then learn learn more about becoming a musician or learn more about becoming a mechanic. Learn more about becoming a, a plumber or an electrician. Like if you're fascinated with electricity, like how does electricity work? Go learn about Tesla. Go learn about Edison. And maybe that'll send you down the path to becoming an electrician. You'll take some trade school. You'll be, learn become an apprentice. But yeah, seeking knowledge to things that interest you could very well lead you on a career path. Like if you're interested in the human psyche, maybe that'll make you a psychiatrist one day. So yeah, don't be afraid to seek knowledge wherever that knowledge takes you. We all have different tastes. We all have different interests in that department. We don't all have the same interests. Not everybody's into history like me. And I'm not into as into science as a lot of people. I mean, science is an interesting uh, subject. I'm not a master of science. I, I, I know a little bit about science, but... The point is, there's people that are going to be more interested in this than you are in that, and vice versa. So, don't be afraid to broaden your mind and open it up, because we are fortunate right now to have the internet. And I realize there's a lot of stuff on the internet that's bull, that's not true, it's fake news, you know, a bunch of hogwash. But there's also a lot of real knowledge out there. If you, if you research it, if you go look, you can find knowledge. Knowledge is power. And... It's amazing that back in the day, whenever I wanted to look up something before the internet, I had to go to the library. I had to uh, ask the librarian, like, okay, I, I want to learn about American history or, or French history or, or the history of uh, Texas or the history of Louisiana. Or, I'm just sticking with history because that's one of my you know, strongest subjects. And you know, I'd have to go to the index cards and, and I'd have to go to the history section. But all you have to do now is just Google it. You have to type in like whatever you want to learn about and it's right there. And you go find articles on it, papers written by people in the subject, in the field. Or you can go watch uh, documentaries on YouTube or Netflix or Hulu or anywhere else. So the knowledge is definitely out there now. And you can easily learn a great deal of knowledge by simply just taking the time to open up your mind and, and seek the knowledge. So yeah, knowledge is very important. Next, let us talk about honesty. I think honesty is also something I would like to pass on to my kids. Unfortunately, we all tend to lie sometimes. None of us ever tell the truth 100% of the time. And sometimes the truth is from our own point of view, right? But I admit, there have been times where I've, I've lied. And maybe I've tried to justify that. Well, I, I didn't want to tell her the truth because she really is fat. I wanted to be nice. I wanted to be kind. I didn't want to be like, yeah, you shouldn't be wearing that dress. Or yeah, that, that hairstyle doesn't work for you. Actually, I, I would probably tell somebody if they asked me. <laughs> Sometimes I can be too honest. But admittedly, I, I have lied in the past. And I've known people, unfortunately, that, that had a habit of exaggerating and lying. It didn't mean they were a bad person. It just meant that they had that, that problem. But I would say that it is easier to tell the truth because it's the truth you'll remember instead of trying to live a lie. Because if, if you have to lie about something, then you have to hold on to that lie, right? And anytime somebody brings it up down the road, you have to continue to sell the lie. And sometimes you may slip up and you may tell the truth and then they're gonna be like, wait a minute, I remember like two months ago, you told me this, so which is it? Is it this or that? So in my opinion, the ugly truth is better than a beautiful lie, even though sometimes the, the truth can hurt. I prefer the truth. I don't like being lied to. And I think most people generally don't like being lied to, if, even if in the end truth does hurt. 
But at the same time, I guess there's a way you can like tell somebody the truth and be honest with them without like being too painful. But I would say that honesty is definitely another one of those virtues that a lot of people lack, especially politicians and corporate suits. So honesty, yes, let us be more honest with each other. And be honest with yourself, because a lot of us, we make up lies about ourselves. We, we go around our lives believing things that we may not actually believe, that maybe we were raised to believe by our parents and by their parents and previous generations, or it just happens to be in societies we live in, right? And or if, whether it's religious or you know, political, philosophical, and maybe you do truly believe those things. Maybe you do, do believe them, but maybe you don't. Have you ever taken the time to like, stand in front of a mirror? Maybe not an actual mirror, but look inside yourself and ask yourself those questions. What do I really believe? Is this the person I'm really meant to be? Is this who I am? Do I really believe this or that? Or do I really have this political opinion or that philosophical idea? Or is it simply something that somebody has, has bestowed upon me that... I guess you could say programmed into me at a very early age. Because, you know, a lot of people do raise their kids religiously if they're religious. Doesn't matter what religion you happen to be. That, that just happens. Because that's the way they were raised. Their parents, you know, took them to, uh, into Sunday school or into the mosque or synagogue or temple or wherever at an early age. And so most of the time, those kids grow up to believe in that particular faith. I'm not saying anyone's wrong or right. What I'm saying is, what is true to you? What do you truly believe in? And what is the truth about yourself? Are, are you actually the person that you tell people you are? Are you the person you believe yourself to be? Or is there something that's not true about you? Something that you've had a struggle with your life? That you, know, you want others to believe you're this person because that's what everyone else is. But deep down inside, you know that you're not that person. Now, I'm not saying to go off and tell people that you're this or that. I'm just simply saying that you need to be comfortable with the person that, sh that you truly are. And a lot of that is soul searching. A lot of that is, it takes time to, to really figure that out, to sort out who we really are. Because a lot of people go throughout most of their life living in that box, that safe space, based off what, the way they were programmed to live. And there are people that truly believe it. But then again, there are also people out there that eventually have midlife crises. They, uh, you know, finally start to see the cracks in the mirror. And then they come to realize that what I believed was a lie. Like, I made myself believe this. And there were those around me that, that programmed me to believe it because they believed it. But I don't believe it. Or they, they wanted me to be this person, but I'm not this person. This is not the kind of person I am. I'm a different person entirely. I, I have different views and opinions and uh, choice and interests that others don't necessarily have. So that's one thing I would love to bestow upon any of my children if I had any because I would want to be their father no matter what because that's my kid. And I would still love them nonetheless. So yeah, it does go back to honesty, being honest to yourself and hoping that... that people will be honest to you as well. So yeah, honesty, I think, is very important. Moving on to the next subject is failure and rejection. It happens to us all. And uh, it's happened to me plenty of times in my life. Believe me. And we don't like to fail. We don't like to be rejected. It's, it's one of the things I definitely didn't like growing up, especially as a teenager. You, you saw this girl you liked, and you're like, yeah, kind of like her. I want to ask her out on a date. I want to ask her out to prom. And... You get nervous about it because you don't know if she's interested in you. You don't know. She may not even think you exist in her world. And chances are that's probably true. Because we're all living this life, right? We're all living a first-person life, our own experiences, our own knowledges. Even if I came from a small town of like 20,000 people, and uh, in my class we had like 200 kids. I was at the bottom when I graduated, but at least I graduated. You know, there were definitely those situations where I really wish I would have asked this girl out or that girl out. But I didn't, for whatever rhyme or reason. And, and it's probably for the best. Everything that happens is meant to happen. I, I believe that as well. But there are definitely times when I did ask girls out. In college, I asked a few girls out because I became more confident. And unfortunately, uh, most of them said no. Either they had a boyfriend or else they just had no interest in me at all. So rejection is a reality that we all have to deal with. And not just when it comes to relationships. I have 
you know, tried to find various uh, jobs in radio back when I was in radio. You know, I would send out resumes uh, throughout the country, big markets, small markets, East Coast, West Coast, North and South, all over the place. When I was trying to find, you know, more work in radio. And it sucks because you never heard back from anybody. And it's definitely a form of rejection right there. Because you spent several years working in this particular field. And you would like to continue being in radio even though it's becoming more difficult to find a job in that particular market because of corporatization and downsizing and automation. Yeah, it, it definitely felt very rejecting not to be able to find a job in radio. It wasn't the end of the world, but at the same time, rejection does hurt. It's very painful, whether it's being reje rejected by somebody else or being rejected from a school if you're trying to get into this particular college and you've worked really hard making the good grades or the, the best grades you possibly can make and you really want to go to this school. Unfortunately, they don't accept you. At the same time, it's not the end of the world. There are other colleges out there that will accept you. You just got to keep trying. You got to keep trying. And if it doesn't work out in this career, then hopefully you'll, you'll find the career you're meant to be in. And even if, you know, several girls or several guys reject you and they're not interested in you, even though you're interested in them, you know, continue trying to better yourself. Continue trying to be confident, believe in yourself, improve yourself, keep doing what you're doing. And eventually you are going to find that person that doesn't reject you. You're going to find the right guy or the right girl that is going to be somebody very special in your life. And when that day happens, it's going to be awesome. Very awesome indeed, but it goes back to patience. You know, you got to be patient. <laughs> Look at me. I'm in my late 30s, and I, I still have yet to find my the one I'm supposed to be with the rest of my life. Maybe I'm meant to be single. I don't know. And to be honest, if I am, then I'm, I'm better off being single than in a miserable relationship, which I've been in a few of, or even, even worse, a terrible marriage. I'd rather be single than in a terrible marriage, even though there is part of me that really would like to find somebody special to spend the rest of my life with. Well, share the rest of our lives with, because it's a, it's not about me. It's about, it would be about us. So it, it, rejection happens to all of us. So you can't be afraid of asking somebody out or, or trying to get that job or get into that school because of rejection, because it's probably going to happen anyways. Just do your best, do your best, put your best face forward, you know, have a good resume, you know, wear a nice shirt, make sure you take a bath before you ask that girl or guy out. I mean, just do the best you can. That's all you can hope for. You, you do your best and uh, whatever's meant to happen is going to happen, whether you get accepted or rejected. And if you fail at something, keep trying uh, until you get better. I mean, look at Thomas Edison, even though Thomas Edison later on became, became kind of a douche to uh, Tesla. I know we brought up Tesla again and Edison, but it took him a while to invent the light bulb. It took him several attempts, but he was determined. But failure after failure and how many stories do we hear about uh, star athletes and uh, celebrities and, and uh, iconic people? We hear all about their, their failures in life, how they failed here, they failed there. And eventually, eventually they succeeded somewhere. Eventually they found their place, their purpose, their rhyme, their reason. They succeeded. Even though they went through a lot of rejection and failure. You will too. But don't give up. Because this is something that happens to all of us. Next is Carpe Diem, which stands for Seize the Day. No, we're not talking about the Metallica song. What I'm referring to is an old Roman saying, which is why Latin, Carpe Diem. And it does tie into fear, failure, and rejection. Because you're not always going to be rejected, and not everything's going to be a failure, and sometimes opportunity does come your way. Sometimes that door will open for you. And when it does happen, carpe diem, baby, seize the day. Don't let that moment pass you by. And unfortunately, there have probably been a few opportunities I've slipped on. And you end up regretting it, but you have to move on. That's the only thing you can do. And you hope that eventually more opportunities will, will come towards you down the road. But when there is a good opportunity, go after it. Seize it by the hands. Grab it. Don't let go. Whenever you find that person that's interested in you and you're interested in them, ask him out. If you know for a fact she or he's interested in you and you're interested in them, yes, go for it. Seize the day. Or if there's this like really good job opportunity that you just can't possibly turn down, but you're afraid of you know, some of these other uh, 
possibilities, these other things. Well, what if a better job comes up or, or, or what if it doesn't work out or, or what if, uh, you know, this or that, but it's a better job opportunity. It's, it's a, like I said, a better opportunity in general for you. Uh, you would be a fool to pass it up. And even if it doesn't work out, at least you tried, at least you gave it your best effort. So yes, carpet diem seize the day. You got to do that. You got to get out there. You got to make it happen. Especially if, if you are lucky enough to have that opportunity, you know, fall into your lap. And sometimes it does. Sometimes it just, it comes along because you're working hard, you're doing this and that, and you get noticed. And then someone's like, hey, you know, I want you to come work for me. Or, or hey, you know, I've, I've been noticing you at school. And, I don't know, just opportunity. Seize the day, carpe diem. That's definitely something I would tell my kids. Because there are definitely a few times whenever I had opportunities and I, I didn't exactly pursue them, and I wish I would have. But that's life. Next is common sense. Now, this is something else, along with manners, patience, uh, gratitude, that I find very lacking in society. And this is nothing new. I've noticed people that have lacked common sense for a very long time now, and, and I'd like to believe that I have common sense. Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But yeah, common sense is important in order to ensure that you have a long, healthy life. And you learn common sense through mistakes, right? Just like uh, knowledge, wisdom, common sense. I guess it ties into the same thing. For example, if, if you know somewhere is a bad part of town, don't go to a bad part of town. If you know something seems shady, if you're having a bad feeling about something, like your friend's telling you, hey, let's skip after school, man. And, you know, let's do this. And, and there's part of you that doesn't want to do it, but you feel like you're, you're giving in to peer pressure. Stand up. Say no. You, you can go do that. Go skip school all you want. I'm not. You know, I want to make good grades. I, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get caught. I don't want to get punished for that. So listen to your, I guess, to your guts, as they say. And have some common, common sense. If you realize that there's a situation that's really bad that you might be about to get into and you, you feel like it's very shady, you, you're not really you know, trusting this person that you're dealing with. I don't know in what situation, but if, if you know, the hairs start sticking up, uh, my advice to all of you is common sense. Walk away. Don't skip school. Don't go down that bad neighborhood. You know, don't go to that shady part of town. Uh, and if it's somebody trying to tell you to do something, trying to talk you into it, if it's something you don't want to do, don't do it. Just say no. Just say no thanks. I'm not into that. It's not my cup of tea. To each their own and, and walk away. And just be very mindful of that because there, there are people out there that will try to peer pressure you into doing anything and a lot of things that, that you probably don't want to do. And uh, if you do end up doing it, then hopefully you live through it and you realize it was a mistake and you learn from that mistake because that happens to all of us. But hopefully that'll improve uh, your common sense skills and you realize that, yeah, that was a bad idea and it could have ended way worse. So, yes, I mean, definitely common sense is something very important and it's something that I would like to bestow upon any of my children if I happen to have any, along with everything else that we've been talking about. So, yeah, common sense, definitely an important opportunity for you to avoid a lot of mistakes because like I said we do make mistakes but you can avoid mistakes really big bad terrible mistakes and there's a lot of movies out there that you see somebody make this choice or in a TV show and you're like don't do it don't do it you know what's gonna happen don't do it and they do it unfortunately that's just a fictional character right and it's just a movie or it's just a TV show even if they're a TV show and a movie you really love and enjoy watching that itself is a lesson because you see it happen to a fictional character, and chances are the writer probably based that off of a, a real-life thing that happened to them or something they heard about. And that's probably the moral there, is that if you're in a situation like that, use your common sense. Don't do things that are stupid. Like, if you're driving down the road, wear a seatbelt. Uh, obey traffic signs and speed limits and anything else. And, and don't do things that might end up getting you infected with something or are pregnant like safe sex is very important those of you that are active use safe sex not just to try and avoid diseases but also you know unwanted pregnancy until the time comes 
full circle, right, when it comes to fatherly advice. <laughs> if you're not ready to be a dad yet, my suggestion is, you know, play safe, kids. <laughs> play safe. Anyways, final bit of advice I have to you all is appreciate the life you have and don't take it for granted. And this could actually tie into a lot of things that we've already mentioned, we've already gone over, that we do tend to t take a lot of things for granted that we can be very ungrateful. And it's sad that you hear so many people taking their own lives, like uh, Anthony Bourdain and uh, several uh, rock stars over the past year, along with a lot of people I've seen stories about. In fact, one of my best friends, uh, his nephew, actually uh, killed himself, I think, a week ago. He got a call from his sister-in-law, and she told him that. He, he walked into, uh, I guess, a park, like, behind their house, and he killed himself. And it's just heartbreaking. I don't know what brought that young man to that point to where they felt like doing that, or Anthony Bourdain, or anyone else that's taken their own life. And a lot of it is serious issues, depression, tragedies that have occurred or even medical issues or maybe they're on the wrong prescription because some of that stuff is that you're prescribed to take is probably not the best stuff to take i mean i'm not saying that all medicine is bad i'm just saying that sometimes yeah people do get pr mis -pres prescribed the wrong stuff that's what i'm trying to say but don't take this life for granted because we don't know if there's anything beyond this life i know there's people out there that would disagree with me that would tell me, go Burns, I believe that there is something beyond death. I think there's a heaven or a hell or a, a Valhalla, Nirvana. I don't know. I've looked into the subject over the past few years. Now, I want to believe there's something. I want to believe that this isn't the end, that this is it, that once we're dead, the lights go out and that's it because I feel like we're all living this life, this first person experience with all the knowledge we're gaining, the emotions that we have attached to things, the people that we've gotten to know and to care about and to love the things we've done, the good days, the bad days. And we remember that stuff. I remember most of it. A lot of it I wish I didn't remember. But at the same time, I have to believe that it, it, it's building up towards something in the end. That it's not simply me living my life for it all to go black or go dark whenever my time comes, whether it's today or tomorrow or next week, next month, next year, decades from now when I'm an old man. I'd like to believe that this journey doesn't end when we die, that it's simply one step, one phase, one door to the other. I don't know. I'll be totally honest with all of you. I have no idea if there's a God. Even though I've talked about how I do believe that there's a God or gods or supreme being or something beyond our realm of understanding, I want to believe that there's life after death. But the truth is, I just don't know. I don't know. I really don't. In that case, we, this is all we have. This is what we have. Maybe it's not all we have, but it's what we have, this life. So don't, don't take it for granted. Be grateful for the life that you have because you could have it worse. I know we talked about that earlier. Your life could be way worse. And yeah, your life, I'm not saying your life is, is a bed of roses. I'm not saying it's perfect. No one's is. But like I mentioned, your life could be worse. And your life is your life. That's right. Your life is your life. You're alive right now. And that's something that's very important. You're here. You matter to somebody. You should also matter to yourself. But you do matter to people. You do matter to your friends. You do matter to your family. You do matter to those who care about you. I don't know what your purpose is. I don't know what the rhyme to the reason is for you. I don't know why you're here. I don't know why I'm here. The point is you're here. The point is I'm here. And you should live this life and enjoy this life for as long as it lasts. Because we honestly don't know how long it's going to last. You could live to your 90s. My grandfather, he's still alive. And hopefully that remains to be the case. And like my, my grandma, my dad's mom, you know, she's still alive. She's also in her 90s. But I also know people that have passed much sooner. Like I've mentioned before, my mom, she died at 25. I had a friend that was killed when he was, I believe he was 14. He was, you know, at an intersection with his mom and a tractor trailer, I guess, was coming the wrong way and basically ran over him. You know, crushed him while he was in the driver's seat. You know, it was a closed casket. I mean, he was here and then he was gone. And I also had another friend who was like a brother to me. I looked up to him. And, uh, you know, he was a great guy. He had a lot of potential. And unfortunately, he died of leukemia 
at the age of 30. And this is, I was probably 18 or 19 at the time when he died. And he, he was like an older brother to me. I looked up to him. And it still hurts to know that he's gone. And that friend of mine that was killed by that tractor trailer. And the fact that my dad died uh, when he was, how old was he? I mean, he died two days after his, uh, what was it? His 62nd birthday, I believe. Or was it? Yeah, it doesn't matter. He died in his early 60s. And that, that seems pretty old. But at the same time, there are people that, that, are, that are living to their 80s and 90s, like, like my papal is, like my granny is. Well, my granny actually passed away. My granny was my papal's wife and my mom's mom. She died back in 2013 at 79. But it doesn't matter if you're 25 or 79 or in your 90s or 62 years old or, or 14 years old. It doesn't matter because your time can come at any time. Be grateful for the life that we have. I mean, I honestly thought that I wouldn't la live past 25. I've mentioned this before. I probably mentioned a lot of this before in other vlogs, so maybe this is like a greatest hits of several other uh, themes. That's okay. But there was a time when I actually believed that I would not live past 25 because my mom died at 25. But here I am, 12 years later, still alive, approaching 38. And uh, if I died tomorrow, I would be grateful for the fact that I live to be 38. I don't want to die tomorrow. I would like to keep living. I would like to continue doing what I'm doing and, and trying to figure out what the hell I'm meant to do in this life. What, what is it that is the rhyme to my reason? What purpose do I have yet to fulfill, if there's any at all? I would like to continue growing my channel. I'd like to continue losing weight and getting healthy and maybe eventually finding somebody special. I would like to eventually be able to move uh, closer to my sisters in uh, Central Texas and Hill Country. There are things I still want to do. And that's part of life too. You gotta find things to focus on, goals and hopes and dreams and, and latch onto them. Because it's, it's so easy to get negative and Debbie Downer and depress and feel like that you know, your life is just not worth living. And I've been there plenty of times where there's part of me that wants to go to bed, close my eyes and just not wake up because there's so much bullshit I have to deal with in my life. So much real life stuff that I'm trying to take care of in order to get from point A to point B in order to achieve certain real life goals that I'm working on. That sometimes you just want to give up. You just want to throw in the towel and just say, you know what? Screw it. You know, I just won't want to end. But that's not life. Life is about enduring life is about accomplishing things even if there is a struggle even if there are ups and downs and failures and trials and tribulations even if you have to be patient sometimes and you have to accept failure and rejection as well as learning from our mistakes and taking responsibility for our actions and when opportunity presents itself seizing the day while at the same time recognizing that some opportunities are not good opportunities but bad ones and use your common sense use your head Follow your instincts, your guts, whatever it happens to be. Be honest and true to yourself. These things are important. In my opinion, these are the things that I would love to bestow to my child, our children, if I had any. It's just a few things. Obviously, I'd want to probably go on and on with a lot more ideas and thoughts and points of view on a variety of other issues. But I feel like, for the most part, this is a good starting point. You know, fatherly advice from me to a hypothetical child, a kid, son or daughter. Preferably a daughter. I've always wanted a daughter. Then I could name her after my mom. That'd be kind of cool. But anyways, uh, hopefully, for those of you that watched this vlog today, uh, hopefully you uh, had a great Father's Day weekend with your dad, your grandfather, a uh, fatherly figure in your life. And I, I hope that you do appreciate them, along with your mother, your grandmother. If you're lucky enough to have... Uh, you know, a motherly, fatherly figure. I, I hope that you remind them how grateful you are to have them because there's a lot of people that don't, unfortunately. And for those of you that were seeking some sort of advice or fatherly advice, I, I hope that some of this proves helpful. That was kind of the point. 